welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to share with you a quick, easy meal. Tastes like a crock pot meal, but only takes an hour. My sister taught me this recipe and I've been using it ever since, so I wanted to share it with you. That sounds good to you. Let's jump into it. Okay, so these are the ingredients that you're gonna need. Some potatoes, some carrots, an onion, of course chicken. What you're gonna do is um, cut up the potatoes and the onions and wash off everything, including the carrots. And then we're gonna put it into this pan with the chicken. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So first you're gonna wash off your chicken breast and you're gonna want to lay the chicken breast completely flat out. So if that means that you need to cut it in half, go ahead and cut it in half. You're gonna want the chicken breast pretty thin so it's able to cook faster. Usually you can just pull it apart and make it lay down completely straight. So I have three chicken breasts here to feed a family of, normally it would be five, but we have a friend over tonight, so it would be a family of six. So I have the chicken butterflied out, about an inch thick, so they can cook pretty quickly. Once you do that, you're gonna cut your potatoes up into a, about a size like this. The key is to cut the potatoes smaller so they can cook fast, just like the chicken. It's butterflied out so it can cook quickly. And I find my kids, they actually eat quite a bit of their veggies when I make it this way, um, which is a win-win for me and any mama out there, I'm sure. I wanna say the hardest part is actually just cutting up the veggies, but I'm really just gonna cut up the potatoes and cut up the onion. And other than that, just rinse the carrots off. So I like to put all my veggies in a strainer just to make sure that they're nice and rinsed off. The carrots are super easy to rinse off. And I just dice them up to about this size. Pour the veggies right onto the chicken and around it. And this is just the potatoes and the carrots right now. And then the onion. Yeah. Yep, you gotta put a lot of love into this dish. And I always spray disinfectant into the sink after I rinse chicken. Let it sit there for a few minutes. So it looks like this. Now I'm about to put my spices on it and add a little bit of water. You're gonna fill it up to about halfway. Rosie, are you helping me? So this is what you can put into it. We're gonna use some of this gourmet collection garlic and onion spice, some regular pepper, some roast vegetables and fries. This is, smells so good. Our tried and true garlic salt, some minced garlic, some Worcestershire sauce. That's the best. This is the only kind I buy. And you can also put some vinegar in it. Give you a little bit of a kick. So first we'll start off with our garlic. And I kind of just eyeball it. <laughs> we love garlic in this family, it's good for you. Put some hair on your chest. <laughs> some Worcestershire sauce. A little bit. 
might put some A1 in it too. Okay, so I don't have much Worcestershire sauce, so I'm gonna go ahead and put some steak sauce in there. This is from, what is this from, Save-A-Lot? It tastes really good though, about half the price. And then this is garlic salt. Best garlic salt too. This is the garlic and onion. We get this at TJ Maxx or Ross, but I looked it up and you can also get it on Amazon. Mama. And then this is the roast vegetables and fries. Well, a lot of pepper. A bit of vinegar in it. My husband doesn't like it all that much. Well, he thinks he doesn't like it. Gives it a little bit of a kick. You're gonna put your water in there. And mix it all together. Make sure it's about halfway full. And this is the secret, tin foil. You have to lock it all in super duper tight. is what makes the vegetables steam and everything cooks so quickly. And the water is what makes the chicken so moist. We've done this with the pork loin, we've done this with pork chops, with chicken breast, chicken with bone in it. It works every time. Okay, so once you have it all sealed, you're gonna make sure that you have your oven preheated to 425. I'm gonna put it in there for an hour. And start. Once it comes out, it's gonna be so good. All right, Rosie, are you ready to eat a delicious meal? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Yay. Mom life. So this is how we do it. It smells good, doesn't it, Kato? Yeah. When it tastes, it's gonna be so good. It's steaming, y'all. Mm, does that look good? Woohoo! Look at that. Does it look good? Mmm. What was it? So I think it's about done. We're gonna go ahead and start the cornbread now. We just do the Jiffy Store corn. Corn muffin mix. And if you really want to know how to make off the chain really good cornbread, comment below and let us know. And we'll tell you that little secret. Mmm, <laughs> you guys. How delicious does that look? All right, so we put it back in for 15 minutes. Dustin's going to hook the cornbread up. Huh, baby? <laughs> Yum. This is a meat thermometer. Dustin loves. Stick it right here. So it should be at. It should be above 160. It has to be above 160. It's at 200. And it looks like it's about. It's a overcooked, so we're good. It's overcooked, but not. It's not overcooked. Look how that. That's like tender. tender. Looks delicious, huh? 
What do you think, babe? It's good. I'm ready to eat. How does it taste? Yeah. Good. <laughs> How does it taste? It's got a lot. <laughs>